you look closely at this picture, you'll see many little people jumping down the stairs. Yeah. But if you look carefully, they're actually not moving at all. Oh, that's true! Take your time. There are four more questions that'll make you doubt your own eyes. Bring it up! The first one. Between the yellow and blue objects, which one is moving faster? The yellow one? Think again. Then the blue one. When the background is removed, they are perfectly synchronized. Huh? Next one! The second one. Is this a ramp that slopes upward? Yes. But when I place a marble at the bottom... What? Huh? How is that possible? Well, if you change your perspective, you'll see it's actually a downward slope. Come on, next one! The third one. Are these vertical lines straight or curved? They're curved! Are you sure? Yes, absolutely I'm sure! Let's use a ruler to compare. Look, they're all straight lines. Huh? Is there something wrong with my eyes? <laughs> Your eyes are alright. Human senses can easily create deviations. The book also mentions that we need scientific instruments and tools to understand the world. Ooh. The last image is the most interesting. Some people say it's rotating counterclockwise, while I say it's clockwise. What do you think? Let's do a multiple choice test. In the hands of the experimenter, there is a sharp class to your saw. So sharp! So here's the question. Which of the following items can't be cut by the saw? It's gotta be the coconut, it's the hardest. Are you sure? Well, it can't be the watermelon. There's no answer! Is there a possibility that it's the balloon? Are you kidding me? The saw will pop the balloon easy. Here's the moment of truth. A plaster saw isn't like a regular saw. Its blade cuts in back and forth motions. It can't cut soft objects. That's why flexible objects like balloons can't be cut open by a plaster saw. Guess how much salt you can get from boiling this bottle of seawater? Mm -hmm. Boil seawater to get salt? That's right. This is water fresh from the sea. It can't be much, right? At most, this much. Then let's boil it and take a look. Caution, this experiment is conducted under safe conditions. Do not imitate. They say seawater is salty. Let's see how salty exactly it is. Wait, something's not right. Seawater is blue. Why is it transparent? I never thought of that before. The sea looks blue because the red and green lights from the sun are absorbed by the seawater while less blue light is absorbed. Ooh, my head itches. I feel like I'm growing a brain. <laughs> oh, almost all the water evaporated. Now we just need to wait until there's a lot of crystals coming out. Oh, oh, it's almost dry! It's almost dry! And then stop heating. The seawater will be evaporated by the residual heat. Whoa, that's a lot! So you boil 1.5 liters of seawater and get about 55 grams of salt. Oh, that's why it's so salty! So here's the question. Do you know how to extract edible salt from it? Hey, woo, my white sneakers have turned yellow. What do I do? White sneakers turn yellow? That's right, I can't wear them like this. Do you have an idea? Well... Then I'll leave them to you! There are different degrees of shoe yellowing. We could try these two methods. First, for mild yellowing, apply toothpaste to the yellowed areas. Brush with water to clean it. But the vamp is still yellow! Be patient. Just drop a few drops of blue ink into the water. Put the sneakers in, soak them overnight. You see? What if they're very yellow? There's a second way. Get some hydrogen peroxide that my grandpa used to dye his gray hair black. Mix it with an equal amount of baking soda and mix well. Apply it to the yellowed areas with a cotton swab. Cover it in a plastic bag and leave it overnight. With a high concentration of hydrogen peroxide, which has a stronger bleaching effect under alkaline conditions, the yellow sneakers will become clean as new. Ooh, this is something you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Look at this, it's full of water, right? Oh. I just snap with force, the water freezes instantly, and it's generating heat. What? Really something? You haven't played with it before, right? <laughs> Come on, I'll make you a bigger one. Bigger one? No way! Caution! It's dangerous. Do not imitate. First, pour 80 grams of sodium acetate and 80 milliliters of pure water into your glass. What sodium? Sodium acetate can be obtained by reacting vinegar and baking soda. Then heat in water bath to let the solid dissolve and you get a liquid that freezes instantly like this one. Huh? I don't believe it! It's just some hot water! Be patient. We'll wait for it to cool. Drop in some sodium acetate pellet. These are what triggers the crystallization of the supersaturated solution and realizes turning water into ice. Miwu, can you make Pharaoh's snake? Mm. Pharaoh's snake? Yeah, that's right. There's been a fan's request for a long time, but I've never seen you do it. It's okay, it's fine. Just say so if you don't know how to do it. I'll show you today. Gosh, this experiment is conducted under safe and ventilated conditions. Never ever try this at home. First, prepare some sand. Then, add some ethanol. 
Mix baking soda and castor sugar at a ratio of 1 to 4 and mix well. Pile it on top of the sand. Add a little more ethanol. Finally, our experimenter will ignite the mixture. Wait a minute. How can such a small amount of powder turn into something that huge? You'll see. When you ignite it, the sugar will carbonize. At the same time, the baking soda decomposes and produces carbon dioxide. It pushes the carbonized sugar up and outward to form the Pharaoh snake. Mm -hmm. Aha! Failed, didn't you? You really don't know how to do it! Take it easy. Give it some time to react. Whoa! A little bit of sugar contains so much power! This is the Pharaoh snake. Let's have a competition. Sucking ping pong balls with a hose and see who can suck faster. Huh? Sucking ping pong balls with a hose? That's right. Let's do it. Hose only. Uh-huh. Three, two... Wait a minute. Why is my hose so long? One, start! One, what? Two, three, four! <laughs> Your hose is so long. Let's see how you can suck with it. Hold on. I'm a little out of breath. Five? Huh. Let's see how you win. Six! Huh? I'll lose if this goes on. What do I do? Seven. Huh? This hose is a bit like... A vacuum cleaner. I've got it. All I have to do is align one of the hose with the balls and spin the other end around really fast. The air at the end of the hose will be evacuated by the centrifugal force creating a difference in the air pressure. So, you'll pick up the pink bottom balls like a vacuum cleaner. Huh? Ah! Hey, hey! This one in my hand is called a bead fountain. A fountain? Whoa! How did it get so high? That's not high enough. If we stand taller with a longer chain, it can go even higher. It can go higher? Yes. Let's have a try. Caution! It's done in a safe environment. Do not imitate. So why does it go so high? Do you know what tension is? I know! I have a classmate named Tension. Let's get started. Ready? How come restaurants always try these firm knots? I'm sick of it! A firm knot? They cut it open. Cut it open? If I had scissors, I'd have done it by now! Wait, wait. I know you're in a hurry, but don't rush. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll show you a trick that just takes five seconds. Five seconds? If you can untie it in five seconds, I'll give you my takeaway. Watch and learn. Just stretch the two ears of the bag and then spin, 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 spin. Hey, stop! You're making the knot tighter! Tighter? All I need to do is a little nudge. And the firm knot will be untied. How's that possible? Here you go. My grandma said there aren't many knots that you can't untie in life. Hey! How can a fire be green? You've got no common sense! Why can't fire be green? Exactly! I'll let you draw on my face if there is a green fire. Wow, I'm gonna hold you to that. Caution, it's a professional demonstration. Do not imitate. Next, you will not only see green fire, but also various colors of fire. Let's welcome the experiment. Can we create colorful fire by mixing the powder together? Uh -huh. Colorful fire. We can try that. Are you ready? Yep. Let's welcome the experimenter to pour in the mixed powder.